Hey friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. This is the last one from Arizona because today I'm traveling back to Florida to be with all of you, at least those of you who are watching from Florida. Yesterday I talked about the idea of envy, that people will envy you for your success. And I said, it shouldn't have to be that way, especially for believers, because we're called to rejoice with those who rejoice. But the truth is, a lot of times when you do get ahead, there are going to be people who look at you and, and are angry at you for it, or they wish it were them instead of you. If there was one person who exemplified this in the Bible, it was Saul. King Saul had David come to his rescue. When Goliath was accusing them of being cowards, David said, I'll go out and fight him. And he did, and he killed the Goliath, won the war for them. And so Saul put him in charge and made him a general in his army. And he was successful, fabulously successful at that. When Saul had some mental health problems, David's musical abilities and his songwriting abilities would bring peace to Saul's heart. And Saul saw how David was a servant who was excelling at everything he did. And rather than be grateful for it, and rewarding him for it, he decided he had to kill him because he was jealous. And so he tried to kill him, but Jonathan, his son, warned him and David ran away. But David lost everything in that. He lost his position of respect and authority. He lost his job. He lost his home. He lost his wife because Micah was Saul's daughter. Um, he lost his security. He lost everything except for one thing. He didn't lose his relationship with God. And that was enough for him. This is what he wrote in Psalm 27. One of his songs is talking about that relationship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. David is saying some of the worst things that could happen to anybody in their life. And he had experienced these things. And he said, this won't destroy me. Why? Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. In verse 4 he writes, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Nowadays, some people have the idea that church is just for and people too afraid to face real life. Um, it's just kind of a crutch that people have. But David was no coward. David was one of the bravest people on the face of the earth. And yet he said, the one thing I want from God is that I could be in his dwelling place, that I could just spend time in his temple. And, and when trouble comes, he's going to keep me safe there, set me high upon a rock. Goes on to write this, then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. A lot of people just assume that God's on their side. Whenever they're in a war or any kind of conflict, whenever anybody questions them, well, they must be right. And because of that, God's on my side. They just assume it. I, I like Abraham Lincoln's answer that he wasn't really concerned if God was on his side. He just wanted to make sure he was on God's side. And that's what David did. David was saying, God, don't turn away from me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Something inside of David drew him to God. And here's this man's man who said, I need the power of God in my life. 
and he begged God not to reject him or forsake him. God could have. David wasn't a perfect man by any measure. Probably even at this point, he hadn't sinned his greatest sins, and yet he's still saying, don't reject me or forsake me in anger. He writes, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. A lot of people got the short end of the stick with parents. Some parents don't take that responsibility seriously. They reject their kids. And David says, even if they reject me, you never will, God. So if you've had trouble with family members, if you've had broken relationships, we ought to do what we can to restore those relationships. But also remember, there's one relationship that's always available to us. God will never reject us. He, he loves each one of us. And he's waiting for us to come to him. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. Have you ever had anybody tell lies about you? David knew what that was, but he trusted God in that. I remain confident of this, he writes. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. David saying this to himself, I'm going to wait for God to deliver me from this. And in the meantime, I'm going to be strong because I know his deliverance is coming. You can tell yourself that too. Whatever you're going through now, be strong, take heart, wait for the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you that you have given your son to us that he died on the cross so that we could have a relationship with you in spite of our sin thank you lord that there's forgiveness and grace in you thank you for your great love for us and for the example of how we can love you and love others as well i pray father that we would fulfill that first command to love you with all our heart soul strength and mind see lord what divided loyalties we have and may we coalesce all of our desires in you and everything else fits into that relationship with you we just pray this in jesus name amen god bless you all i'll see you in florida very soon take care and god bless love you all